are there maps? Because here with the end, Independent, there's uh, loads of arrows and explosions and a key of the fighting forces. Some great drawings of boats in, in blue there. What have you yeah, found, Katie? Because the star, you see, hasn't gone to quite the same effort. There's a little black and white <laughs> map down in the corner of page five, <laughs> saving the colouring, obviously, for the more important stories about naked ladies. <laughs> Sounds fair enough to me. <laughs> Who's going to benefit from this war? Mainly the, uh, the Kos Kosovan Tourist Board. Uh, before, nobody knew where it is, now we all know where it is, getting a lot of publicity, <laughs> and, uh, and they're levelling it now, ready for all the hotels and leisure complexes. <laughs> no, nobody is going to want to go there. Now, you're saying everyone knows where it is now. <coughs> I haven't got a clue. I'd love to go there, but it's beautiful. Where is it? Well, no, neither do I, but apparently, if you look at this map of Southampton, you go down the A3025, cross the river, and when you get to Woolston Station, you ask... <laughs> OK, fine. Now, finally, I read somewhere the Luftwaffe are involved. Should we be scared? Yes. Why? Because it's the Luftwaffe. Do you know who the Luftwaffe are? No. <laughs> you haven't got a clue? No. Mackenzie, I know you collect Nazi regalia. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the Luftwaffe being involved? Well, I think they should at least have changed their name, something a bit more user-friendly. Luftwaffe just, you know, comes up images of the Second World War. What, have you got any examples coming uh, up? Well, my course? suggestion would be the, the Jerry Wingers. Jerry Wingers. Spring. That's, that's terrible. The Flying Fritz. Awful. The last one had better be really good or there's going to be trouble. Air Force Hun. <laughs> <laughs> you saved yourself at the end. Germans, pay attention, listen to Mackenzie and Daisy. <laughs> Journalist Matthew Paris, who campaigns for Truth in TV, was himself outed today as a TV cheat. He made a documentary in which he had to live on the dole in Newcastle for a week. Unfortunately, poor Matthew only managed five days, but was persuaded by producers to pretend he'd gone the whole seven. If Clean Cup Paris can be persuaded to fake a report, then how easy is it to persuade the public? We sent out our own rogue documentary maker, Paul Garner, to find out. Here he is with the facts, mainly made up on religious cults. Historically, the advent of a new millennium has always seen an increase in the number of religious fanatics, with thousands of British teenagers currently under the spell of cult leaders. I've been speaking to those people directly affected by these sinister organisations. Basically, the situation is I've got to do a report on um, people who join cults. As I haven't really got time to go and speak to people who are genuinely involved in the case, I just wondered if you, you know, I'll tell you exactly what to say. Yeah. You, you could make out you were... Um, okay. A cult leader. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> you know, a lot of this goes on in, in TV news. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't often get, you know, the real people involved. That's why it's all right, is it? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, the public watching don't know the difference. So why should it? No, no. Why should it matter? We've researched it, and the woman who her name was Marie, I think, yeah. the woman who whose daughter was taken in. Now she's um, she's a semi-professional, because a ladies' rugby player. OK, ready, folks? OK. My daughter was taken in by an evil cult. How did you know that she was being possessed by these people? She used to leave messages, evil messages, on household items. Gather you've got your toaster there. What does that message say? Can you turn it around and let us see? It says, toast, sounds like holy ghost, sounds like heavenly host, doesn't sound like vomit, 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 bastard. <laughs> girl wasn't very well, was she, when she did this? No. OK, darling, your own time. This is my daughter, Claire and um, she joined a cult where they had to marry animals. And who did Claire marry? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, young people who get lured in by sort of, you know, spiritual figures who basically are just con men. Yeah, I, I'm with you now. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. do you mind if we give you a priest's outfit and then you can make out that you're a priest for us? And yes, I'll, I'll tell you exactly yeah, what yeah. to say. Yeah, yeah. I was attacked. By I was attacked <laughs> by a cult leader who bit off my nose. So that's not a real nose then? No. So what is this device that you've made here then, Father? A uh, cultipole. A cultipole. And Father's holy water from the cultipole at the cult leader? Uh, yeah, but that, uh, that is not uh, holy water. It's not holy water, then what is it? God. <laughs> so. We've done the research on this guy, so we know what he looks like, oh, but it just means wearing a, a cloak and a, and a wig. Is that OK? Yeah. Just so it disguises who, who you are, yeah? Okay. You tell me when. Yeah, when you're ready. Yeah. I'm a cult leader. I think the world will end at the millennium. How will it end? God will send a shower of bacon. A shower of bacon. 
Yes, yes, it's our thinking, yes. I believe people should only laugh with words beginning with Z. Zorro. <laughs> Zoom, ice lolly. <laughs> Xanadu. Do you take me for a fool? <laughs> the cult made them uh, wear black paint make makeup here, which comes off. So if you don't mind me just applying yeah. a little bit of that. Yeah. OK. My cult insisted that I looked like an endangered species. And what species was that? A panda. <laughs> so with the millennium now only a few months away, disturbing stories such as these should, hopefully, serve as a warning to us all. This is Paul Garner in South London. Princess Di lookalikes. Bang, crash, went their meal ticket. For them, there was no light at the end of the tunnel. Until now. Because, as luck would have it, Prince Edward's bird is a dead ringer for Alphide's daughter, Diana, leading those lucky lookalikes to say, bye-bye, die, hello, Sophie. Yep, according to the Daily Mail, hordes of die doubles are back in business. So how do they do it? Let's find out. Please welcome our genuine Sophie lookalike, Julie Woolley. <laughs> Please sit down. Thank you. Now, Julie, I've got to say, stress, you are a genuine Sophie lookalike, yes. aren't you? Yes, I am. And do you enjoy your job? Uh, yes, quite fun. Now, you do look very much like the two ladies. Can you do your dye for me? I've got to say, I'll tell you this. When I, I always thought in my life that I would at one point snog Diana. Did you? Is it still possible? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, got to, I've got to stop. Mackenzie's getting jealous of me. Now, can you do your Sophie? Um, yeah, sort of. She just... Uh... You... What do you mean, sort of? You're a Sophie lookalike. Well, we don't really know what she does. Where's the footage? What, what does so, she hang on like? a minute. You're a Sophie lookalike. You've got yeah. no idea what she looks like. You've got well, no idea what she does. She's well confident, isn't she? Head up. And just don't do Diana. Head up. Well. You haven't got a clue, have you? Now, <laughs> obviously, in between Diana and Sophie, you had a, you had a break. Was there anybody else that you, you tried to look like? No. <laughs> did you not, I mean, Jill Dando, Jill I think, Dando. maybe, or you, did you not put on a few pounds and try and do Judy Finnegan? <laughs> or even, even Richard Madeley, I can see a resemblance, there's a bit of a mullet forming at the back there. I'll stop there, I can see you getting offended. Now, I know a lot of die lookalikes have cashed in on their, their looks by posing for soft pornography. <laughs> Would you ever consider doing that for me? No. <laughs> now, Finally, do you, do you do your Diana anymore? Yes. When was yes. the last time you did it? This morning. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what was that for? Um, it was at a, a book signing for um, Monica Lewinsky's book. <laughs> you, you were... I was with Monica Lewinsky this morning, yeah. So was I, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> you were hired to be Princess Diana. Mm. What was the relevance? Why? Um, the Andrew Morton book. Oh, Same yeah. Same biographer. That, that toad. Mm. What was she like? Very quiet. Mm. Yeah. Um, why, why was she quiet? Did she have a mouthful? <laughs> with a sandwich! With a sandwich! Listen, Julie, that's all we've got time for. Thanks very much for coming. Julie Woolley, Sophie Reese jones if you like. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Now, they say a week in politics is a long time, and that time flies when you're having fun. But what do these clichés mean? And what do politicians do when they're not hanging out with Thai hookers like Joe Ashton? <laughs> well, I went along to Westminster to find out. At the age of 23, you arrived in the House of Commons. That must have been, you know, crash bang, wallop, what a picture. It was a bit, yes. Um, you know, as a politician, if I say black, you say... I don't know what I say. It depends mm. in what circumstances. Well, actually. you say white, really. Don't no, you? I don't necessarily. I mean, if you say <laughs> black, I might. Place? No, but if you said black, I Would might. Would you say pink? No, if you said black, I might be talking, uh, be asking you about uh, the Steve Lawrence case. So I don't, I don't think, oh. I don't think you could do that. But yeah. I am quite a private person. Mm. Uh, but, but you must have felt in those terrible tussles you had with the press, a bit like Lady Godiva almost. <laughs> I didn't set out to do anything like Lady Godiva, let me say. <laughs> I should hope not. Um, now, is the word yes in your vocabulary? Possibly. 
he is extremely good on his feet. He's very much a natural orator, a natural catcher of the word and the mood. It's very catch good. Catch on the eye. Yes, I, I must say, I, I enjoy listening to him. I think he does it well. I think in many ways it is a rather synthetic, rather superficial government. It's also, I think, based on a contradiction. It's a coalition of one man and the rest. Mm. And a coalition of one man and the rest won't last. It's almost sort of panda's smile, panther's claw, isn't it? The Tony Blair double. I suppose it's partly being brought up in a vicarage. <laughs> oh, were you? So that I understand that. But do you but, pray a lot? No, 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 I don't talk about that. Just talk about the, 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 the social problem. Most countries have a second chamber. Why do they have a second chamber? Why do they? <laughs> I'm just about to say. Do you think you lick the tears off the spider's web? No, I don't. <laughs> now it's time to join Oscar winner, former matinee idol. What's actually going on? To find out, here's a regular look at what the papers ought to say. It's called What the Papers Ought to Say. <laughs> the Sun's headline is... Clobber Slobber. What they meant to say was... Fantastic, the war. This really shifts papers. <laughs> and now it takes a slightly different tact. Onslaught. For the first time since Hitler, Europe goes to war, and on a massive scale. What they wanted to say was... Fantastic, a war. That should shift papers on a massive scale. <laughs> the star's got a slightly different view of the conflict. Talk live to Mel. What they meant to say was... Leave the sodding war to page four. This is what sells papers. <laughs> Hooray! And next week, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. See you then.